down 35.6% in 2022. Is Target an excellent defensive stock to buy for 2023? I'm going to answer that question using several different metrics in this video, so stay tuned. The first thing I'm going to look at is Target's revenue growth quarterly going back to before 2014. And what you could see is a uh, wildly fluctuating, well, I shouldn't say wildly, but wildly for a brick and mortar store. Um, uh, some fluctuations in Target's revenue growth, it was falling all the way until about 2017, and then it started growing again. But what happened in 2017 or around 16, 17 was an, in, uh, a very solid investment in its brick and mortar stores by Target Management, they spent nearly $10 billion upgrading its existing brick and mortar stores, updating them to match with current consumer tastes. And these included the setups for what is now an incredibly popular same day services program that Target has. Buying online and picking up in store in a Target parking lot has proven to be incredibly popular with Target customers. And the seeds for that investment, for that, uh, for that innovation, were planted in 2017 when the company made those investments in its stores. And so since then, it was experiencing very nice growth. And then, of course, the pandemic happened, and that boosted sales for Target as. Uh, uh, other stores, non-essential stores were forced to close down. Target gained the benefit of those, those customer dollars that were uh, unable to spend at other places. But now that, that tailwind is reversing and Target's growth slowed to 3.38% in its most recent quarter. Still, I would say that is impressive considering this is coming on top of all of this excellent growth it already achieved. So instead of reversing all of that growth that it achieved, it's just kind of, it, it kind of increased and it's kind of plateaued and stayed up there, which is still really good news for investors. Some were fearing that the revenue growth was gonna explode and then come right back down. That hasn't been the case. It exploded and has stayed high. So that's good news. The next thing I wanna look at is Target's operating income and that also exploded during the pandemic-fueled boom in spending, uh, rising to over 2.4 billion in, in a few quarters, and achieving it, Target achieved its highest operating margin on record during the boom times in the pandemic. That slowed down. That reversed tremendously, and then it's rebounding slowly. Uh, this big drop in operating income might look alarming. But I will caution that this is not a long-lasting uh, impact of on its operating income. This was due to an increase in inventory levels more than the company would have liked to have had. And so it needed to discount its inventories. And as it discounted its inventories, of course, if you lower the price of your, um, if you lower the price of the, the product that it's selling for and you have your cost of goods sold staying where it is that's going to decrease the margin and that's what happened to target but this is a temporary thing once it gets rid of this excess inventory it's not going to experience this headwinds in operating income but boy does it have an excess in inventory let me show you right here look at targets inventory level 17 billion as of its most recent quarter that's higher than at any point way higher almost 5 billion higher than the a previous peak before the pandemic at 12.5 billion so nearly 50 percent more inventories than it's ever had before the pandemic and this happened of course because of all the supply chain shortages and so many out of stock items target management over invested in inventory to make sure that it had the products customers were coming in for but they overcompensated at the same time consumer behavior shifted quickly to spend more money on away from home experiences and less money on things that they consume at home which tends to be the kind of things that target sells and so it's left target with this mismatch between inventories and what customers want and so it's needing to discount to get rid of these inventories so the good news is they've made some good progress and industry wide you know even its competitor walmart some other retailers like home depot macy's um and then some some uh brand names like nike 
have all stated they've had excess inventories and they've all been able to sell those excess inventories without giving too much discounts, right? Without overly discounting the inventories. The discounts have been moderate. If you've been shopping over the holiday season, you probably noticed that these this these discounts were not incredible. They were moderate, right? Some things were for sale, but it wasn't like such a big sale that you were like, oh my God, I got to buy this thing even though I don't need it because it's such a good price. So that's that wasn't very good news for shoppers, but it is good news for investors. All right, finally, let's look at Target's valuation, trading at a forward PE of 28.33. And that's about the average forward PE it has traded for going back uh, before, uh, let's say, in the early stages of 2021. Uh, but that said, Target's facing a more uncertain future in 2023. Yes, they're, they've made good progress with the discounts and selling through some of the inventory so far. However, if the economy recedes, uh, as some economists are expecting a recession, that could pressure target sales and it might need to discount more, which will pressure its earnings even more. And so if you're looking for a defensive stock, I would not go with target for 2023. Target is not an ideal defensive stock to buy right now. All right, so that's all I've got for this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash parkev for the 10 best stocks to buy now.